If you're a developer, then I believe you should at least know a little bit how to use your command line. And in order to improve um, the keyboard usage, you will actually love the command line environment. And specifically in a Linux environment, you can do everything that your computer could do by using the command line. And in fact, I now use the command line for almost everything. So I typically use a Z shell uh, command line. There's a reason for that, which I will explain uh, later. But specifically, what we typically do as developers as well, we try to issue some commands, things like how to build a project or how to access Git. Right. And that can already be made much easier and more effective by using aliases. So I was showing that in the past already. So instead of, um, for example, typing maven clean package or git status all over again, we can do things like, you know, maven clean package and auto expand that or git status or git commit, git push and whatever we would like to expand. So what I define here is some so-called shell, uh, shell aliases. And I believe there are some different type of aliases that make uh, the life a little bit uh, easier. So for example, the reason why I ought to expand that is I want to know what that actually aliases to. So I want to know that this is made in clean package and this is git status and things like that. So this makes it um, easier for me, but also there are different um, aliases, I believe. So when you say curl localhost 8080, please access this. Then here you can see there is no trailing um, white space here because I might want to continue typing. Or in other regards, there might even not be an expansion of, uh, of the alias. So that is also an alias um, already, curl with, well, um, expanded with a few more options that I otherwise need to type or need to see uh, all over again. So I believe that makes sense to just think of what type of alias um, do we want to include here. Also, um, there might be some aliases that you um, can expand globally that are uh, to be defined a little bit differently. For example, saying curl and then, for example, grab for something or um, let's, well, let's create a file for this. So for example, insert some test here and test there. And now what we can do is cat this and grab or grab directly for the test and then just, you know, uh, combine that grab and then maybe another alias for piping with less. So that is also very helpful. And what that is, is um, not only global aliases, but the piping of commands. So the, what you can see here is just I um, chain commands um, together by using uh, this pipe. So what I can also do, I have some um, JSON file here. And then for example, I want to pipe this with the JQ command that just pretty prints my JSON or where I can actually, you know, access some properties. Please um, access the foo property that is a string. Now I'll put this without the quotes and then, you know, do things like base 64 encoding. And then just for fun, the whole thing back, decode it again. So you can chain your commands using these pipings. What is also very um, helpful is um, subshell commands to that look even uh, more fancy. So if, for example, we say, curl, please access my Kubernetes cluster with my Istio gateway IP address. And how I find out the IP address is as follows. I can use another um, alias here and I use the dollar sign and brackets that I can actually substitute using the tap um, command and that gets replaced with, in this case, the IP address. And then I can continue typing. So how that works is um, that you say, if I have a subshell, and then whatever that would um, calculate would just be substituted with the result, which in this case is kind of boring, but you get the idea and um, you can actually type that uh, in your commands to make them a little bit more sophisticated. Same is true if you say uh, Docker stop all the Docker containers they're currently running, and that's the same idea. It looks a little bit sophisticated at the very beginning, but it's actually very, very helpful um, of a concept. What else um, you might want to have a look at is how your auto completion works in general. So, for example, if you use any, um, uh, that's another um, alias, by the way, of the, well, original um, ls command. If you want to, for example, see all the files that are available, well, you can hit the tab uh, command. And if you have some Unix command, 
um, or in general a command that works with files, then it will um, autocomplete and, for example, you know, um, substitute whatever you would type here. What is also possible to do that with other custom commands. So for example, if I want to access my Kubernetes cluster, kube control, and another alias, kube control get services. And now I know I have a coffee shop service in my Kubernetes cluster. So I can type that and hit tab and it will also auto expand this, well, whatever is in the current context. So the shell knows about, well, this command, if you register an extension, and it will auto expand whatever makes sense within the current typing context. So you might want to have a look at all the tools and um, command line um, binaries you're using, whether there is an extension available. So that's very helpful and that leverages the productivity a lot as well, I believe. In general, if you use the command line, you can get um, quite quickly into scripting, into bash scripts and shell scripts, which is actually very easy because your shell scripts are, well, nothing else than just the commands that you would type in manually into your command line otherwise. So for example, if you build your project using, let's say, Maven clean package, and then you know we want to build a Docker container, we want to push that Docker container, we want to run that Docker container, things like that. Just take all of these commands, put them into a file, make it executable, and there you go. And that's very effective. So for example, you know you can do this for all kind of commands or all kind of things that you would otherwise even create or type my, uh, manually. So going back to keyboard usage. So for example, instead of um, creating a git ignore file yourself, what you can do is just write a shell script that does a bunch of things, for example, for this Maven project that uses IntelliJ. So whatever you're doing, try to well, find an easy way around it. That also improves the keyboard usage because we you have to type less in that regard. So that's more effective as well. What else is, I believe, very helpful for developers if you use the git command line is the git hub command line. So it's called hub and that uh, comes with the git um, commands already and it also extends your git um, CLI with the github commands. So it knows about github issues and um, pull requests and things like that. So if I go um, into a project that actually um, is on GitHub, and then what you can do, you, for example, can create a new issue on GitHub in that specific project that is linked with the remote repository here. So what I can say, well, I now create, instead of creating a commit or something like that, I create a GitHub issue. So I can say new issue here and there is an error, whatever, message. So you can use the um, GitHub flavored markdown already and then just create that. If you write this, then it will now actually create that issue, um, which you can also browse in the command line or, of course, in the browser. And this has uh, just been uh, created a new issue here with um, the message and um, the formatting as well. So I believe that's way more effective if you use that on the command line. The same is true for what is very helpful, creating pull requests. So if you have multiple um, um, remote repositories um, here being set up remote um, origins, what it can do is uh, take the, um, the, the origin and the upstream, for example, that's done out of the box that if you create a pull request, it will try to create it from the origin to the upstream or whatever you um, like to define. So that's much more, I believe, effective to set up rather than clicking around in the browser by doing that in a command line. Another tool that I'm using um, in, instead of the LS tool is actually um, um, the AXA tool or EXA, however you pronounce that, that actually has a little bit more advanced customizing options instead of just LS for displaying files. Um, for have some more uh, coloring available as well as what I'm doing instead of the cat command for readme is actually calling bat. That is uh, another um, command line tool that just makes it um, a little bit nicer. So it has some color um, syntax highlighting for uh, a bunch of file types and, and stuff like that. So th you might want to have and uh, check that out as well. And these were a few things to make, especially the keyboard usage of your command line more enjoyable.